to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Do you know why we will not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain. And say, look, um, you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir, I'm not becoming You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence. You know it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue. And then one day, let me tell you how God will announce that he has come to that territory. A spectacular move of God will happen. One day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. Shakata bakata. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fire. Can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. Shakata, kata, kata. Lekata, kata. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing. But a genuine desire to seek him. And God is saying, I, I am watching. Listen. All this, all this running around. Am I a prophet or am I an apostle? Is nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with God knowing who he is. Even if God tells you it will not look like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All this I am apostle. This just wait and see it will happen. You are joking. Nothing will happen. It is in the place of prayer. As that fire refines you, it starts drawing you to become something. And everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet. Even you, you may mistake yourself for an evangelist. Because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. <laughs> Why is this unusual? <laughs> there are people who think they are called in, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, no sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray. And all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw in part and he said so, he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand. You say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown. Not just by titles, results, results. Results will show who you are. If you're a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. The ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? 
What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo satos kapriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makato kata kata kata. Sheke teke te. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion, look good, but it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. 
can we pray in the spirit just for one minute just just to allow the holy spirit bring this there are gentlemen that don't pray we are over conscious of ourselves no sir Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers Within, within that territory the second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis. It's one of the highest advantage of coming together. When believers come together, the whole territory can hear what God is doing now. Don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday, that's what he's still doing today. When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that God anointed some he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory so what, what happens here every week is the will of God a convergence of men and women are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd that there, there is a joke are the people chairs the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds 
just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too ah, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings a crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds god brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow there are all kinds of opportunities for growth number three how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles Jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles Jesus performed 
less than one percent of them was thrown in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the word. instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you will be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say God revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them God has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say I saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our word serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he laughs hey, young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they will start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is God saying anything? That's a sign that God is working. God is working something powerful in this time. Oh, yeah.
God is raising mighty men in our days. He won't stop, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. Acts chapter 19. Please quickly. Acts chapter 19. Brothers and sisters, we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ. This anointing thing is not for showmanship. The anointing is a silencer of doubters. Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words. Our noise is too much. We need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's own belief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19 verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. Today, we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says, hey, what did you say is wrong with you, sir? Darkness is all over our house. Say, so bring this handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it. We rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power, period. Obed Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time, but something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered, and after two weeks, you come back one month, nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat. And say, Lord, these hands. Otherwise, a day will come, the hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head, you believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery. Of the oil you have put upon his hand. He said God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters. What has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh. Let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solve their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of a cup here. Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them 
and the evil spirits went out of them 13 and certain of the vagabond Jews copycats exorcists they took it upon themselves upon them which had an evil spirit you know the name of the Lord saying we adjure you they thought it's just by by big manism or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we are reading to verse 20 and then 14 says and there were seven sons of one skiva a Jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them that's the side effect of lack of true power it's not that the devil is trying to confess this is not confession this is a question you, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God you think everybody is faking it he called those who are real known by the realm of the spirit not by members Jesus I know Paul I know who are you hi who are you when a demon spirit asks you who are you is that a nice thing from the realm of the spirit they are watching you every day you have one suit you went for a program they kept water in front of your table they did a, a good publicity and they said now it's time for the man of God a man of strange anointing and you hold the mic and you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you and all of a sudden the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry I don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain break every chain make progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They will do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night, as you are sleeping, the next day, you get up and find yourself in the hospital. What happens? They say that's how the spirits work. They don't talk to people. The next thing you just, whatever happens to you is their answer. Listen, it's not everything you see that is, that is all that there is. When you see a man of God moving in the anointing, it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening. But there are interplay of spiritual laws. A man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder. And you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere. When that man, if he's spiritual, if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done. Are we together? It's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever. No. That's why we must grow. But as we grow, we must trust God to know 
certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly media don't take it away just leave it there so that we we'll hurry up please help us and this was known to all the community are you seeing now something unpleasant now is known to all the community jews and greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came upon them and the name of the lord was magnified they saw the apostles healing the sick and i'm sure that they said what is there what is their miracles anybody can heal the sons of Sceva went to try it when the demons beat them it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere and the bible says that the people glorified god and then verse 18 says and many that believed did what as a result they came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 we are reading to 20 many of them which also use curious acts that means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it it was working small by small but when certain men came into that city they got everyone packing out including magicians do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who a community imagine a popular herbalist in bromo or somewhere maybe zaria city bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say i was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady and just because i saw her cat walking i thought it was all about the reform when i touched fire i got a reply and a response that i've never seen for 30 years of herbal practice this is what happened there and they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver 20 popular scripture so mightily grew the word of god why because of a public display of miracles signs and wonders we need the supernatural we need to cry for the anointing we need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives man of god don't preach without power it's not about saying there's somebody here the power of god will throw you that's not what we are talking about that that's not power we are talking of results results undeniable results like some of you are seated here now you are coming for the first time you will not need to tell people you came for koinonia you will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted you open your bible a true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter is until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely let me give us one more there are six but i'll just stop at number four so that we pray number one is prayer number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory number three an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls number four intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers the fourth way the ordinances of god are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers this is a serious one let me tell you this failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget god not just forget his ordinances but forget god i'm watching that and i'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of christ and even the church in zaria who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we are focusing on ministry 
who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs thank god for um, um cem thank god for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the american church they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old baptist woman served god all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love god we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones android devices ps4 i don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this ah, they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia i know that many of you say ah, are they too young to understand as occultists whether the children are too young to understand you see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that small boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things they may be too small to articulate it but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too a superstar lifestyle is not god's plan god's plan is not superstar apostle joshua selman god's plan is apostle joshua selman committed by grace certain precepts and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so may god forbid that the day will come in zaria when the average young man does not know god say amen may god forbid that in zaria during a church service we will have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the god who can change any man's destiny may god forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know god listen 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 our children must love god and they must love god genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate god i want you to beware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that god is calling you into children ministry receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters 
You have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things. Don't let them watch it. Don't let them watch it. There are times you need to regulate. I'm not, I'm not trying to be harsh. But there are times you need to regulate all this. This A child of seven years watching television from morning till night. Switching from one music channel to the other. Hearing things and receiving them in the spirit. And authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them. We must preserve godliness. Say amen. amen. You don't like what I'm saying? I don't plan to stop at all. We must say it again and again. Some of you, God gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools. Not with the name of any ministry and bless them. But now that you have become Apostle Joshua Selman, you have become Madam, Madam, whatever, businesswoman or whatever, you have stopped, go back, repent and go back. We have this mentality that when we are ministering to children, it's a sign that we ourselves are children. It's the society that makes it. So in a bit to show that we are matured, we leave the children and say, look, let's start talking to married men. Jesus said, let the little children come to who? Come to me. He says, and do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please return back to children ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. When a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers, one, two, and then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason. One, two. Jesus too does not like it. In, include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. Preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom. There's this song that says, Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourth born can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. He's insulting you that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that, that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years, no. See, Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. 
let them know discipline is part of love because most of our children will be born in millionaire families you must discipline them don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society pray they say no I, the church is hot please daddy can you give me the car to the jeep no son you are sitting down here if me your father the owner of the jeep the jeep is sitting down you must sit down and pray let's go back to our primary schools i'm serious i'm rounding up let's go back to our secondary schools gone are the days when teachers including christian schools i don't know what is christian about the school if they don't pray you have a christian school and you openly said it's a christian school and at the beginning of the class they don't pray what what is what is the christian about it the teacher himself cannot pray you never see a fasting program organized in the school nobody cares while they are praying the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again wait and let koinonia start her schools oh yes oh yes let koinonia start her schools and you will see there's nothing like i'm busy who will supervise it it's a mandate don't do that and busy man of god and allow the devil kill your ministry sit down open your eyes and see what is happening this teacher's life is questionable he's destroying the life of the student call him to the office sir we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you but we notice that um it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children could there be a problem would you need some counsel nobody should talk to me I'm doing all that nonsense i tell him as you finish this rubbish collect your last salary with the cashier go out of this place and never return any good pta they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards they laughed at covenant university laughed at landmark university laughed at mountaintop university but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to cambridge and harvard because they kept god throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month. Or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid. Only to come and testify. Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I love I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, Apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home and I said daddy I know that for 35 years no door has opened in this family but I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing I'm using the opportunity of this strike can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does and in two days something that did not happen in 30 years happens you have revealed Christ to that environment and finally we must mentor the younger believers but the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored because there are many proud proud people proud people you taught somebody he just falls down and you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank god for what god is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there you see vision i see vision you pray for the sick i pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable 
mistake. Now, let me tell you, mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing. Because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored. But they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing. And they taught them rubbish. They taught them pride. They taught them a pompous life. They taught them a theology of imbalance. It matters who you listen to. It matters who you open up your spirit to. But that spirit must be open. Brothers and sisters, our generation is at stake. In the next 10 or 20 years, many of the people we look at today will be gone. Is, is the truth. Do you believe that? Many of our fathers, they are already wrapping up. We insulted them. We said, ah, they came and they taught people, cover your head, don't cover your head. We insulted them. They taught people, die, 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 die. We insulted them. Now the button is being passed to us. Let's hear what our children will say about us. We insulted them. We refused to see what God was doing through them. And as young as we are, we kept running our mouth insulting them. They preserved the button. Some of them today, look at great men like Papa Ilya Deboe. People like Billy Graham still alive. These men serve God to the end. Let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency. That's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? I can't remember it again. Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, listen, all my treasures will be nothing. The jeep and the duplex, only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. But if that's all you can give a generation, if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in mary clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've told me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is gone Listen, we're not going to be here forever No matter how you don't want to believe me Nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old. 200 years ago, none of us on earth today was on earth. Don't live your life foolishly. We owe our generation and our children a debt. I will never, except God takes my life, but it will not be when I'm alive. That I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth. If it means my life going for it, let it go. But the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation. This is ministry. If you are not ready for this, don't jump around and talk nonsense. A lady sent me a text today, passionately. She may be following, listening. And she said, Apostle, she's from my village. She said, Apostle, come to my village. Why have you not come? I said, don't worry. You think I won't come there? I'm coming. God is counting on you. Listen carefully. I'm rounding up. God is counting on you. I'm not a man of God. It doesn't matter. There are souls. If God planned that in Pastor Alpha's lifetime, 
you are supposed to save 100 million people do you know if you save 20 million people the world will clap for you but it's when you get to heaven God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest if God has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Bakoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land Who stand in the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take a stand And pray for the sea for our land Listen to the second part. It says, The power of darkness release our land. We'll never prevail. We'll never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion. Those who will rise up and pray. Stand in the gap on behalf of the land. We stand in the gap on behalf of the land. Down on our knees, we take a stand 
and bring the seed of our land. We'll pray for the need of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. Shakatos Kaparia Kadas Kalepai Ebreketos Segeta The powers that keep men poor The powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land The powers that stop development The powers that stop advancement The powers that destroy men of God The powers that destroy churches, the powers that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus, we come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies, we come against you in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ grows. Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone, but can we pray for Nigeria? We listen. As God looks at the map, he's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities, some villagers, and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. the walls peace to the borders era na na basira na die shaka toka tama nada peace in the east peace in the north peace everywhere we fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we declare and declare First, our priesthood. We are lampstands. We are lampstands. Priests unto God. We raise an incense of intercession over this nation. Nigeria is God's own nation. Nigeria, amalgamated by the hand of God Himself, we command from border to border. The spirits of bloodshed. We curse you. We curse you. We curse you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Let's pray against the spirit of sentiment. Are we together? Whether Christian, whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone. And we must live together. Are we together? Whether, whether Igbo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness. People have lost lives.
there are spirits that move across places they have destroyed several parts in africa and they want to come to nigeria it's listen if you understand this thing it's not about north south east or west it is the devil looking for your destiny and looking for your children i like you to pray and command peace to the walls of this nation every state mention the states by name we command peace peace in plateau state peace in kaduna state peace in lagos peace in kano peace in abuja peace in bauchi hallelujah hallelujah very quickly please let me wish you are from the east come and stand here Sam you are from the north stand here we say you're about person that you may come quickly I want us to do something prophetic here very quickly anyone from the south south I want the six geopolitical zones represented south south east I don't know where I'm, okay you are, we are, we are here together there's there's one more poly, geopolitical zone Northeast, who is from there? Northeast. One, two, three, four, five. Remain in one area. Where are you from? Northeast, not there's someone. This is south, south, southeast, northeast, north central, southwest. There's remaining one. Please, our time is gone. Northwest. Kaduna, where else again? North Central, you can start, Pastor Alpha. This is Nigeria. I'd like us to pray and prophesy that as the hands are joined in hands, any spirit trying to destroy us, the evil man will love the Yoruba man. The house man. We love the South South man. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred. By this prophetic act, we declare Nigeria arise and shine. God is not just a God of Christians, He's a God of everyone. We are praying for everybody in Zaria around. Let the Muslims prosper. Let Igbo people prosper. Let Yoruba prosper. Don't antagonize anybody. Lift your voice and say, Father, because of our presence, Nigeria must prosper. Lift your voice and pray. Take away any tribal sentiment. All we want is to see Jesus glorified in our nation. Jesus glorified in every home. Jesus glorified in every geopolitical zone. All I want is for Jesus, Father, 
we declare that we are not only kings we are priests and part of our priesthood is preserving the ordinances of God apportioned to our territories Lord I join my faith together with all the nations following us and all the territories in this nation we declare that God and his purposes will not be lost in any territory in the name of Jesus regardless of the church the ministry and the individuals may the purposes of Christ be preserved Lord we pray for Zaria our Jerusalem we declare that Jesus remains Lord we declare that Christians Muslims are all blessed in this nation we decree and declare that everyone here in Zaria is blessed because of the presence of God's people and father we pray for our beloved nation our heroes gave their blood to see where we are today we command every spirit that wants to plant enmity against one person and another we banish them from this nation in the name of Jesus as your priests we lift up our voice from this side of your kingdom and we declare that as far as this territory is concerned we remain one I decree and declare by this apostolic grace and under this platform the church in Zaria remains one there is no Igbo church there is no Yoruba church there is no Hausa church there is only the church the ecclesia God's own place in the name of Jesus there will be no hatred and no violence within this border father we commit our people here representing this nation prophetically let there be the spirit of love and unity every plan and purpose that is not of God to cause trouble to kill people to maim people to destroy lives and properties we banish it in the name of Jesus and Lord we thank you we ask for grace that our priesthood will be the reason why every territory we find ourselves will love you and live for you in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus celebrate Jesus thank you thank you so much hallelujah our time is gone but please listen it's a spiritual responsibility never move around because of what is happening around the nation and start antagonizing anybody are we together in koinonia and everywhere I have never never shown any tribal prejudice or any of these things no whether you are Igbo Yoruba Hausa South South I've gone to all the geopolitical zones in this nation and they love me everywhere they have received me wholeheartedly nobody cared where I came from are we together we must propagate love and peace don't join ignorant people carrying all kinds of things. You turn and start hating evil people everywhere. Turn and start hating northerners everywhere. And pastors, let's be careful. The pulpit is not where we used to, to, to build hate. Are we together? No pastor, no man of God. There are many listening to me. No man of God should go and take their pulpit and tear down another locality. That's not what God asks us to do. We are to preach love, we are to preach peace, not even against Muslims. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are people, most of the people transporting you now after service, they are outside, they are hearing me. Most of them are Muslims. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. We've had a very healthy relationship with them for years. There are many people who help to serve in various things in the ministry. They are not Christians. We love them. We pray for them. But we must treat them with love and honor. The head of the Nigerian Union Road Trans of Transport Worker, when, they, when his wife gave birth, the protocol department went to go and visit him in the hospital. You see them come for our dinner. Christians or Muslims, that's not our business. We invite them for dinner and we love them. This is how the kingdom advances. By the time we start bringing all these prejudices, when people act, it is because of spirits, not religion. It is because of spirits, not culture. We must be smart. 
so that our lives will be advocates of truth this is why god anoints people this is ministry for such a time as this every man of god here you have a responsibility to sensitize your people to promote love are we together don't those of you who are on facebook don't go and join all these dull comments by people who don't know god post something and then you say it on behalf of koinonia it will be an indictment to both god and us i stand here on behalf of the ministry to to present our position to the numerous people we are people of love we love god we love government we love state we love everybody are we together our job and our assignment as given by god is to pray for the peace of this land and to contribute our quota to the building of the body of christ and not to come in with all kinds of ethno political and religious sentiments no be a promoter of peace or just be silent and pray if you have nothing to do online don't go and begin to instigate violence and then say you are a christian and attach the names of men of god destroy their reputation online because of carelessness we must be sensitive hallelujah father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye